so all you guys are like here, and you guys are learning CNC machines, learning manufacturing so that you can get better pay, better job. That's the hopes, right? All right, I got a kind of crazy story. My dad comes from Detroit. My grandfather worked at Chrysler as a machinist. My grandfather on my mom's side was a machinist at Boeing. He was actually a foreman. I didn't know any of that until I was 30-something years old and owned my own machine shop because I was away from my family. I had no family. I was living on the beach with my mom, homeless, and I grew up fighting in Hawaii, man. When I was 14, I'd already been arrested 21 times. When I was 22 years old, I was not only in a 16-year prison sentence. I was in solitary confinement, and I thought my life was over. I would never see my kids again. I lost my way in life. I got out of prison early, and one day, I just had enough. I tell everybody, like, manufacturing literally saved my life. I went into a machine shop. I had no idea what a machine shop was, though. And they had these CNC machines. How many people know what a CNC machine is? A CNC machine is one of the most advanced ways to cut material. It's computer numerical control. It runs a table, it has a spindle that comes down. All axes work together, and you can make anything. When I stood in front of it, and I opened the doors, and I looked at the numerical control, I just got it. I've had too many people tell me in my life that you're going to fail. Oh, you can't make your own company. Manufacturing is dead. Oh, you can't do this. You have no money. Oh, you can't do this. But I had a certain belief in myself after overcoming so much that it was possible. I was ready to work. If I'm making $9 an hour and that programmer is making $27 to $35 an hour, what do I have to do to get there? I walked into a shop. They're making parts for NASA. They're making parts for GE. They're making parts for Siemens, just crazy parts. And I was like, I can do this. I started programming. And, and the rest was history. Within one year, I was the shop foreman, head programmer. Now I was like starting to enjoy my life, you know, and, and, and just take pride that I was good at something. It was all about putting the aggressiveness that I used on the street, the aggressiveness that I used in prison into manufacturing, and then taking it to a high level. And then it upset me when everybody's saying that we can't compete. Big companies need a profit. And if they can't get their profit right here, they believe they're programmed to think they have to go overseas. Just show America that we don't have to give away our workforce. We don't have to ship everything to China. We don't have to have other people make our products. We can make it right here. There's a lot of shops out there, you know, they have older technology. A lot of people jump into CNC's and they don't really understand the pressure, the tools, and all the fundamentals involved in manufacturing. Technology is changing. If you're running two parts all the time, figure out how to run 100. Figure out how to run 30 parts. And you start thinking, like, how many parts can I make in an hour? And then it becomes fun. And what it equates to is a cheaper part. Most machine shops are only running at 20 or 30 percent of their capability. So if we can take it from 20 to 30 percent and take it up to 60, 70 percent, you're going to bring all that work back. You guys are in technology. You're in manufacturing. You're going to learn more and more and more, and it's all levels. There's a lot of different codes and stuff, but master it. You should have a cheat sheet of codes that are necessary. That's what I These think, are yeah. necessary codes to memorize and be tested on before you touch one of these machines. I've seen parts scrap that are $25,000 for one. You know what I mean? These aerospace parts, and there's no going back, you know? <laughs> there's no going back. I've gotten good at just double checking super quick. You gotta double check everything and because anything can happen and you fly so fast, you know, so fly fast while you're double checking things and stuff. There is nothing I do more than make sure my quality is perfect. We're inspecting every fifth part, every tenth part. We're we're visually looking at every single part. If we're dealing with tents, we're inspecting a hundred percent, even though it's not called out. If you inspect your parts, you're not going to have garbage. 
The secret is solving people's problems, finding a niche, and taking your quality to the highest level at an affordable price. What mark are you guys going to leave on the world? Don't let anybody tell you you're too old. You're, it's not the right time. If you have character, if you have work ethic, if you put the time in, doors open that you don't even know. If we're going to step into a manufacturing facility, let's be exceptional. You guys have an opportunity here to solve your customers' problems. Push the limits, get your feed times down, deliver a quality part on time. Manufacturing is coming back and it's going to need its workers. Thank you so much. Lincoln Tech, yeah. Eliva Strum right here in Wisconsin in the great United States of America. Woo! Woo! That was awesome.